we're happy to have licensed mental health counselor Leslie Cutler back on set with us. Welcome, Leslie. Thank you, Julie. It's Your great to be here. Your third edition of Mindful Absolutely Moments. Absolutely my third edition. We're excited to have you back. And Thank today you. you're going to talk about creating deeper, more meaningful relationships. Yes. And we're going to look at this from five perspectives. Okay. So the first perspective is listen to understand. Yes, absolutely. So I believe that all of us want to be heard. All of us want to be understood. But so often relationships that end with, you know, a lot of arguments tend to leave us with this horrible, bitter aftertaste. You know, so often when individuals are speaking to us, we're not really listening in the way that we need to. We're too busy building our arguments and building our defenses. But really the goal is to construct a bridge of understanding through the chasm of the argument so that you can come to a place of agreement. And really, if, you know, there's a lot of good communication and listening in a relationship, there'll be very few problems because everything will kind of be out there. Right. And if you don't understand something, it's really a good idea to clarify and confirm what the other person said and meant by what they said. Yes, very much so. Okay. And that can really solve many potential issues to come exactly. down the line. Okay, second? The second one is to pay attention to assumptions. We all know people who assume the worst in everything. Well, that person hurt me because they're selfish, they're unkind, they don't care. We all know these people. And we cannot truly know the place that another individual is coming from. So if you don't know, if the behavior seems unclear, what you need to do is to ask, what is meant by that? What, why was that said in that tone? Please help me understand. And then to listen carefully and be able to believe it. I think so often we let this go and then these assumptions become our truth. And this is what creates the big distance individ, you know, individuals find between themselves. There's a quote that I really like by Stephen Convey that says, we judge ourselves by our intentions and we judge others by their behavior. Ah, so it, it, it is so true. So, you know, if we assume that other people will have positive intentions and that we're all really just doing the best we can, well, then we will have a much more positive and understanding right. experience. It'll be reflected out. It will be reflected out. Number three is be kind in words and deeds. Yes. And then life happens, <laughs> right. you know, a bad day at the office or sitting in traffic for hours on end. You know, we wind up coming home and that kindness gets lost in the way that we project out our anger and our frustrations to those around us. So, sh you know, it really can be a challenge yeah. to show loving kindness to those that we love most on a day to day basis. But it really has to do with showing love and kindness to ourselves mm -hmm. and then that kind of coming out to those in our circles. So being kind and loving to yourself goes hand in hand with the way that you wind up treating other people as well. Okay. The fourth <clears throat> one? Is find wholeness instead of expecting somebody to complete you. Yes. And everybody has a problem with that, I think. Everybody does, yeah. and yet we all seem to know this on right, some right. level. Right, right, but we don't I mean, work on it. But, you know, everything that society and culture throws our way is about, you know, finding your other half, you know, which in some way assumes that we're all broken and looking to be completed with right. somebody else. Right. So we wind up finding a person that we're drawn to, and we create this kind of symbiotic merging that becomes so toxic and unhealthy. So truly it's important to kind of take time for yourself, understanding that within that solitude, you can find yourself, have a better understanding of yourself, nurture yourself and practice your own self care. Okay, and for our last minute, our, our number five is learn to see the extraordinary mm -hmm. in the ordinary. And I love this one. It's so true. And you know, I think that again, this is where society sort of feeds this that, you know, we always need to be creating these epic moments right. and we should, you know, look to our partner to create this for us. But the reality is, is there is so much beauty that can be found in just the day to day. And sometimes sharing those <clears throat> kind of very small moments together, taking a walk together at the end of a long day where you're holding hands and kind of connecting 
or sitting down over a morning coffee with somebody can be paramount and can be so crucial and have so much beauty wrapped in that. Right, just that one simple act sometimes is more than a big magnificent one. Absolutely, okay. very much so. Thank you, Leslie. Oh, thank Again, you. Again, wonderful, wonderful advice thank about you, relationships. Thank you, it was a pleasure this, to be here. this time of year, Valentine's Day coming up, it's yes. a good time to kind of reassess our relationships. Yes, and remember that all great all great relationships and love stories start with the love within ourselves first. That's right.